Welcome to part out of how to make a Japanese shoji screen. In this part I'll show how the Kamiko are prepared. Kamiko is the lattice which goes in the front of the shoji screen. First the, the ends, on the ends, cuts are made where the spigots to the length of the spigot. These cuts are made with a Japanese Dazuki saw and a special jig which allows the cut to be made in exactly the right position. As you can see by the knobs it's adjustable but the spigots are 15 millimeters long. And those cuts ensure that when I trim the end down to form the round spigot or dowel type end, that it will not, it will always have a nice clean cut on the end. In this sort of segment, I'm showing how I cut them to length prior to putting them into the jig to do those cuts on the across the around the end. The block that I use ensures that you get a 90 degree cut and the Dazuki saw is cuts a very fine cut. The spigot is formed in a little machine I made to do just this. It's actually a biscuit jointer with a, a fitting attached to the end of it and as I put the piece through it, 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 it trims the end to a dowel which is 7 millimeters in diameter. And there you can see why I have to cut around the ends at the ends there to ensure that the, I get a nice clean shoulder. at the end of the spigot. These can be cut by hand and initially I did do them by hand but I found this was a far quicker way to do them and it's very accurate. I used this machine for some years but now I've, I use it in a similar arrangement to get a router. But it has the same effect, it does the same job. Now then test test it into a a block with a, a seven millimeter hole to make sure that they will be a good fit. The Kamiko are joined with halving joints meaning that half the timber is cut away on each piece and I do this in my CNC mill a special jig has been made to hold the Kamiko that it, and they are taped together up to six at a time can be cut they're held down by a toggle clamp and they're held in by a, a G clamp the position where the cut is made is marked on the Kamiko and then that is positioned exactly where the cut is going to be made by the 8mm router bit that's being controlled by the CNC mill. <coughs> the size of the Kamiko is 8mm by 10mm so this cut will be 5mm deep and if the machine is adjusted to do that cut accurately, which it can be, then there's almost no finishing to be done. They, they are a press fit because the Kamiko is made to be exactly 8mm wide. The fit is so good that I, I do not glue the Kamiko at all. They, they are 
nearly push fitted and that's strong enough to hold them you don't need to be glued These can also be done by hand and for a few, few years I did do them by hand but when I made the CNC mill I found that it was far more effective and far more accurate than doing by hand and much quicker as well. Now you'll see that I'll, all it needs is to clean up a little bit on the edges of the pieces and in this case I didn't even bother but I normally would clean up the any of the pieces that have been left by the cut and just with a, a tap of a mallet they will go together All the holes are marked for the Kaneko and then I'll drill with a doweling bit on the drill press. The wooden piece you see on the drill bit is to give the correct depth. The dowel was 15 mil long, but I drilled the hole to cut them the deeper than required to ensure that there's going to be no I'm going to hit the bottom. You see the, you see the drilling of the holes in close up now. Once again, I must have found this informative and interesting. And I thank you for watching.